Hello, everyone, and welcome to the stream. It's Local Chat. It's episode 61. Despite me, keep calling it 62 in the notes. Uh, I am Will Crosby, your host. Ian Gibson is below me. Hi, every week. More than happy to be here. Every week, more than happy to be here. And also here, Jake Terrio. I'm even more than happy to be here. How so. dare you? Are you here to get roasted? Uh, every time we have a guest on, we like to roast them. Sure. Yes. Last week, we made sure to roast Gabe uh, immediately. So uh, I just want to say, uh, I read your scripts. They're awful. Boom. Roasted. Mine? Whoa. My script? Why are you showing Are you me? talking to me, Will? Yeah. I was roasting okay. you. I actually haven't read them yet. Yeah, I've been meaning to. Yeah. I... Wow. Wow, he just dropped, so he didn't have to make fun of me. You. That's so nice of him. Did <laughs> he's, <that> down. <laughs> he's back, though. Um, oh. My Wi-Fi is on the fritz. Wow. Ooh. Wi-Fi? Get yourself, uh, like, 10,000 feet of Ethernet and then ship it to your friend. <laughs> I have a 100-foot <laughs> Ethernet cable, but it's running to my work computer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Um, folks, we have lots to talk about. Also, I have to adjust the length of that uh, Ethernet cable intro. It's going to play a little bit longer. I've been messing around with this stream deck and trying to figure out stuff. Um, so bear with me. Uh, folks, a lot of things to talk about. But first, we've got to talk about what we've been playing. And boy, howdy. Uh, I do not want to hear about what Jake's been playing, but he's on the show, so we're going to have to talk about it. Uh, yeah, can I just say, is this this is that time of the year, right, where Destiny fans get really disappointed? No, believe it or not. I don't believe you. So but let's, go ahead. Tell let's, me about which yeah, queen. let's rip this off like a band-aid. Am I starting? Uh, yeah, you just, you just talk. I'm just going to probably oh. go do something. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I will also, I'll say, Ian, usually the big release comes out in September, that is true. But it got pushed to February. Can I just say, mm -hmm. last night, I actually had a strong urge to play Destiny. Mm -hmm. And I didn't because I knew it would be an absolute nightmare picking that game up again after probably two years since I played it last. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a giant problem that I actively want to play the game. And yet at the same time, it's almost impossible for me to do so. So I was thinking about an analogy. When I was like, how can I come on this show and I can pitch this to Ian in a way that he will hate the most? <laughs> so I'm going to say... <laughs> Let's do it, baby. Destiny 2 The Witch Queen is mm -hmm. the Avengers Endgame of Destiny. <laughs> but I liked Avengers Endgame. Let me... I, I'm framing it in that if you had seen, if you had not been watching Marvel oh. movies for like two or so years before that, or if you hadn't even touched Marvel movies oh. at all, and you came into Endgame, and you'd be like, what's going on? Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Whereas if you have been there the whole way, and you're seeing Avengers Endgame, you're you're looking at the, the narrative fulfillment of 10 previous years of storytelling. So let me where, ask you, Jake. Yes. Do you feel fulfilled? Because, I, I mean, I said it jokingly, but I really do think it's Destiny fans get very excited for these major releases that come out, and it feels like the release is the response to it is always a uh, disappointment. Like, I don't think that's an exaggeration. If the subreddit is any indication, which is typically one of the saltier Destiny spaces, mm -hmm. um, it does seem like even the 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 core users, not even so much the re like reviewers, um, it has been fairly positive weapon crafting and some of the other like the specific game modes people are still kind of on the fence about but the core game especially the new campaign um and um the new narrative um seems to be very well received with most people saying like people often mention the taken king or forsaken as like the best destiny expansions mm -hmm. um and people are sticking this one up there with those um, okay, that's good to hear. I really liked it. A lot of a lot of neat narrative implications of the, the new campaign. Well, that's good. I mean, I'm genuinely happy that you feel fulfilled because I, like I said, I think Destiny feels so good. There's just so many barriers to you actually enjoying it. In, now there's in like polearm weapon archetype. Oh, I saw so that good. and I was really confused. <laughs> 
it's so good. It's got a it's got a ranged attack. It's got a melee attack, and it has a shield that you can. It's so good. That's but cool. You just that sounds whack really cool. things with it and you smack them all around. It's delightful. I I'm excited. You're happy about this. This is the first Destiny expansion I have not bought since. Uh, it's the only Destiny two expansion I have not bought. <laughs> Um, I have bought every expansion. Forsaken was the last one I actually played and really enjoyed. Every other one I played for about 15 minutes and then didn't touch anymore. And was like, glad I spent $60 on that. It's a huge step up from Beyond Light, for sure. Okay. Um, and the art direction, I think, in this expansion is just... The, the art team at, and Bungie is firing on all cylinders. Like, the new Throne World Patrol Zone is one of the most gorgeous uh, video game environments I've ever. Awesome. Ever. Just ever. ever. The, it um, ends there, Jake. It ends there. Wow. Um, I uh, love um, when you drop What did I say and when did you perfect. lose me? You, you said, said it was one of the ever. most gorgeous ever. <laughs> one, one of the most gorgeous game environments I've ever set foot in. Ever set foot in. Okay. Um, no, that's great. I, I've seen a lot of uh, video and stuff of it um, from coworkers and stuff. Uh, and Twitter, obviously, and all the stuff you retweet. And I think it looks really cool. Like, I think a lot of that, like, hy stuff is the, like, cool, creepy alien stuff that's super fun uh, mm -hmm. and cool to look at. Like, I think the Dreadnought in Destiny 1 was so much fun to so explore. Good. Um, I think that... it's better than the Dreadnought. Really? Okay. Maybe I'll I get am. it. I don't know. I Part of my brain is like, what if we did it and then did, like, a stream series where we did the raid or something, but... I don't That's know. Saturday. Saturday. Here we come. Level up to Sorry, Kingdom Hearts. We can do it. Um, I would... No, actually, I was going to say I'd rather play Kingdom Hearts 2 than Destiny world's 2, but first. that is absolutely Let's not true. Be, I, mean, so I was about to say that, yeah. to be world's first for the raid. Oh, those jackets are cool. <laughs> they're expensive. Yeah, they're... I mean, $777,000, Jake. They're very expensive. I know. I do still have my wonder. very first Moments of Triumph t-shirt, and I think mm. that's that's the most effort I will ever put into Destiny 2. I do often but, wonder that if you had the money and just felt really stupid, if you bought it at that price, would Bungie ship it to you? Yeah, I wonder. That's, Ian, do you know what we're talking about? Fuck no. So, like, <laughs> the physical... No, no, I wasn't sure. Because, like, the physical items... <laughs> Are, are listed on the website for seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars, uh, and seven hundred seventy-seven. Oh. And so, when you unlock the thing, you get a discount code to make it fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. So, gotcha. I, I've also wondered the same thing, Jake. And I bet they, I bet they can't sell it. I bet you can't buy it for that much money. They would turn down seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand. No, I, I should say I don't think you could log onto the website, put a credit card in, and buy it. I think there would be more steps to that. I don't know. It's still it's like, that that price still shows up in the cart until you go yeah, to the. Maybe you you're have to right. put a discount code in in the same page where you put your credit card info in. Just try it and then cancel the transaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait till it ships. See what happens. Yeah. That's like um. There's a very funny joke in uh, Mythic Quest where <laughs> um the head of monetization he's like. Let's just do something stupid. And he puts in like a chicken for like $500,000. It's like some stupid cosmetic item and somebody buys it and they're just like, aren't you so proud? And he's like, no, these idiots will buy anything. That means my entire job is a joke because <laughs> there's <laughs> there's no skill in my job if these idiots will pay for anything. <laughs> and he like, becomes depressed about it. It's very funny. I would buy a chicken if I could. Um, that's great. I'm I'm happy you're here for the Destiny update. I'm happy you're here to talk about it. I'm happy I'm I not playing it. More about it. Honestly, Is it crossplay? Is crossplay finally here? Yeah, yeah, it's been around for a bit uh, since the last expansion, I think. Okay, because I, yeah, you I, can, we all can play on I, PC and I can play on PS4. We can yeah, play I wouldn't mind doing. I wouldn't mind doing a stream, but literally the only thing that prevents me is, I I. I don't want to start that game up again and just be horribly confused and have like no idea where I am and what's going on because they, they've changed that starting intro sequence a couple times now, even for recurring players. Right. I will mm. say the well, best case it's scenario is close to the, sorry, you will, you go. I was just going to say best case scenario. Jake's there to explain it to you. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we the, won't be doing that then. The okay. New Light starting mission is the same mission as uh, Destiny 1. Functionally the same mission. It's different. There's like other characters in it because the characters that were in it are dead now. Um, okay. Or they've pieced off to other parts of the universe. So, yeah, I mean, maybe we will do that. Just let me know, because I feel like I'm going to need several play sessions on my own to get back into the game. Like I said, that game feels fantastic. I really love it. There's just too much of the other than gameplay stuff that really pushes me away. There is yeah. a lot of it. I, I it's it's I know. And we've talked about this on the stream a lot. It's difficult to recommend to people <laughs> unless mm. they've It'd been be cool playing it for a while. If there was yeah. like a like a Halo mode where you're like, hey, I just want to play these levels with my friends as like a campaign and you none of anything. You can the Witch Queen campaign. For well, I was just going to say like you want. none of the stuff I'm acquiring or anything means anything. Just bring me to a level with good weapons. Yeah, put me in Let the me game. play through yeah. it. And then I can just leave and go back to being a crappy Destiny 2 or. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be cool. I get it. Yeah. I can see that on a big list of like, hey, things we should add to Destiny. Mm. Uh, but we're never going to. Um, I'm glad for the Destiny update because it's always good to hear about that game. Uh, I'm glad they are somewhat acquired by Sony now to do things. Uh, moving on, I, Ian and I have been playing a game a lot. Uh, we talked about it last week, but it hadn't actually released when we talked about it last week. Uh, the but we Elden... still talked about it for 40 minutes. That's true. Uh, the Elden Ring... It actually worked out that Gabe was on because he's such the a soul Elden fan. Ring. I don't think um, I don't think it's the. It's just Elden Ring. No, 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 no. Sorry, I meant the as in like introducing the, the Elden Ring. Have you even Have you even played the game? I hate Will? I hate this bit. It's the worst <laughs> bit. I don't even deserve this bit. Um, which, I have which been playing software Elden is Ring. it from? Oh, the From Softwares. From, All caps from, from Wait, software. From what software? Oh, which the, one? From one. From Japan. Um, I hate you. I just want to talk about it. Um, I've been playing Elden Ring. I think I have 24 hours into it. Um, last okay. I checked. This it's is what's been a... keeping George R. R. Martin from finishing those books. Uh, no, no not at all. I don't really don't <laughs> no. think he did much. There's really, there's really not a lot of George R. R. Martin in there's it at all. <laughs> people on Twitter. I keep seeing tweets like, uh, George R. R. Martin add something and then they show like some crazy thing from the game and i'm like that's just that's just from software that has nothing to do with him yeah um, i think the best joke i saw was was it was george R. R. martin with a clipboard and it had all these things and it was like souls crossed out and he writes runes next to it <laughs> like it's it feels exactly like a soulsborne game it's just that some of the terms have changed and that's it you know so it's like has FromSoft changed their ui that much since not really. Dark Souls one. Because every time I see clips kind of, of somebody playing, I'm like, that's just it pretty looks, much. The it same. looks like the the graphical fidelity and the art design always gets better, but the UI to me always looks exactly the same. Yeah, but I've also least, never played a Souls game. So in this game, it disappears and like comes mm. back, or like if your health is low, mm -hmm. everything will disappear except the health bar. And mm. same with like stamina and magic. So yeah. it's kind of nice. That's and neat. then you just hit Y to bring it back up if you want to see something. So that I think is a really neat addition. Uh, mostly because yeah. like you just take screenshots whenever you want and see around and not have to like and, have stuff get in your way. Yeah. You can also just turn really the HUD on it for an open world. Yeah. So you can it? hide the UI. Yeah. 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 It's, it's nice. Um, so I'm about 24 hours in. I finally I beat uh, Renala. The the Moon Queen. I don't think she's a Witch Queen. I think she's a Moon Queen uh, at the Rey Lucaria place. I did it. I was trying it solo for like an hour, and I was getting so close. And then I was like, "Ah, oh, I hate this." So I uh, summoned a person, and we went in. And the, the the that boss fight has an opening that is like a lot of running around in crowded enemies. So if you have at least one other person, uh you have to go for specific targets. So your spirit doesn't do anything because they just attack everything. Uh, so yeah. having another person is great because you just go after the stuff and you can move on to phase two. And then phase two, uh, it's just you got to get in there and like take that person down. Um, so I beat her. What's, what What is what is she in terms of like mainline demigod story bosses? She's like number two, number three. Where, where yeah, she she's at? the second boss. 
Um, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to do it, but I was like amped up and I was like, I just want to finish this now. Uh, so I kind of like dove in there and got it. And uh, after you beat her, you unlock respecking, uh, which is nice. Uh, so uh-huh. you can just redo all your points. You have to go get a currency to use it, but I, I, it's rare, but I think there's an enemy that does drop it every, not every time you kill him, but there's always a chance. So I don't think there's a yeah. limited resource of it. Um, so that that just, just leads boost. me to... Yeah, you yeah, just totally. boost arcane to get him to drop it more, you know. Yeah. So I um yeah, you could boost arcane all the way up, go farm it and then go respec and put your stats yeah. back. Uh so I, I had to start a new save on work or on work. On PC because I was recording stuff for work. Uh and I started as the uh vagabond, is that the that's a melee yeah. guy. And I was like, "Man, this is so much fun." I I don't know why, but I was like really into it. And that's how I've played most Dark Souls from software games. And this time I was like trying out magic. So I actually, uh, I had to go, I had to run to a castle, brand new character, run to a, run and do all like the beginning stuff, get torrent, run to a castle and defeat a boss for a post. And I somehow did it. I really don't know how and got the Game of Thrones sword, which is, I wrote down here, which is just a sword with a bunch of swords fused to it. Um, Mm -hmm which is pretty neat. So I, I did that. And then I, I went back to my Xbox save, went and respect and just uh, did a crazy, like put my, cause you can't, can't lower your stats below where they started. So I, I spec to uh, a higher uh, strength and everything. And now I run around with a giant pickaxe and I beat a dragon earlier, like an hour ago. And it, mm-hmm. you know, it's been pretty fun. Ian, I, I, I'm amazed that you were still playing this game. Yeah, I have about 11, 12 hours into it. I'm level 29. Uh, I'm having fun. I, and I think I think um, I, I kind of want to talk about why Elden Ring works where a lot of the other Soulsborne games haven't for me. And I think like the number one thing with a bullet that was in all the reviews is it's open world. Um, so there is no, no loves open world games. I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't say I don't. I also wouldn't say I do. It's more just that difficulty is not really a problem in this game because if something is too difficult, you just leave. Like, like I, uh, I tried to to fight Margaret, Margaret, the the first boss, and um, I did that at like three hours in. I fought him once. He wiped the floor with me, and I was like, "Okay, screw you," and I went and messed around. <laughs> And then I came back at like 10 or 11 hours. I, I just tried to fight him again like an hour ago. And I, sp- I summoned my spirits and I was taking him out and I was doing some blood loss. And I got him down to like 30 percent, like three times in a row. And then I was just like, I don't feel like beating my head against this anymore. And I don't have to because the thing is, like, like he's blocking access to the castle for me. But I already found a way to walk around the castle <laughs> to, to just ignore that. So I'm already I already have access to all these other higher level areas with better gear and better loot, just completely ignoring this first boss. And so I'm literally just exploring, getting gear like when I feel like something's too difficult, I'll try it once, maybe twice, and then I'll just back out and go somewhere else. And it's it's really nice being able to do that. Um, it, there is definitely some still some Soulsborne stuff that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, the UI is not great. Like it's it's annoying to have to compare items. You literally have to like get them next to each other in the inventory and then just like like quickly go back and forth between them to be like, okay, which is better, which is better, which is better. And you can't and and it doesn't do like the this is what you have equipped. This is better or worse. It's like it's it's annoying. So wait, um, wait. In inventory, it does that. It's in shops. It doesn't do that. Yeah, in shops it doesn't do it. That's yeah, right. Okay. Um, it well, it will compare right. with your equipped item, but if you're right. looking at two items in your inventory and neither is equipped, it won't. It won't. Oh, really I do I it. just equip it. Uh, okay, that makes sense. I see what you're saying. Yeah, and then and then there's there's so many items in this game. It's just too many. There's too many items, too many craft stuff. Like I I understand they want to provide all these options so you can spec your character in any different way and provide potions and items to help you with that, but there's just too much. There's too much going on. Um. The the I'm gonna keep nitpicking here. I still love the game. The so the fuck, there's 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 specific consumables like smithing stones that you use to level up your weapon, right? But Jake, you're gonna love this. You're gonna okay. love this, right? Okay. So to level up your weapon, 
like let's say the first time you need two smithing stones mm -hmm. you're like great i'm good and then you go to level up and again and you're like you, you don't have enough you don't have enough three. smithing stones and you're like what do you mean i have like 10 smithing stones they're like no you have smithing stone bracket one you need three smithing stone bracket two <laughs> <laughs> like there are there are uh, levels of the exact same the exact same named yeah. item. They just have a bracket next to it saying this is a this is a quality one. This is a two. This is a smithing uh. stone three. And it's so annoying because when you're just going through your inventory or you're looking real quick at what do I need or you pick it up, you don't want to have to look at it and go, okay, is this a smithing stone three or a two that I just got? Right. It's so it's so annoying. Yeah, that's um, weird that they would tier consumable items that that aren't like potions. Like I can lend, I can understand, yeah. you know, like oh, this heals you know ten health points, and this one's a more powerful one. It heals this that. Yeah, but stuff like that, like that's weird. But there's it's weird because when you level up your spirits, there's a ghost grave wart, or no, there's yeah. a ghost glove wart and a grave glove wart. So they're similarly named, so you know they're basically for the same use, but the tiers and the name. As mm -hmm. opposed to smithing stone one, smithing stone two. And it's just so because because it'll be like how many smithing stones you have. You have smithing stone bracket two hyphen three, which means you have three level two smithing stones. And it's like, you piece of shit. Just, you know, it sucks. Just wait till you get to the then, somber I, smithing stones. God, at least that has an extra word in it. You know, so those different <laughs> levels of them. God damn it. <laughs> And then and then I will say the other thing is um, it's really interesting running around and talking to people and getting there's not like a quest system with journals, but there's like, hey, you talk to this person, they give you a tip to go over here. And that's really well done. But there's also two things about it that really suck. And number one is if you go up to somebody and you talk to them and then the conversation ends 90 percent of the time, that's not the end of the conversation. You have to talk to them again and they will give you an extra couple lines of dialogue. And then you talk to them again and they'll give you an extra couple lines of dialogue with the important thing at the end. And it's like, no, if you know, I'm just going to hit there and have to talk to you multiple times in a row, then just give it to me all together, you know, and that's that's annoying. And there's also um, some of the quest or items are just like. They're puzzles like you might as well just be like, hey, you got an item. Hey, go Google it. That, that'll that tell you what to do, because we're not going to tell you what it does. It's not clear. It's not going to be clear at all. Like there's some quest lines where it's like if you talk to this person and then you happen to pick up this item over here and then you happen to talk to this third person, then this fourth completely unrelated thing is going to happen and give you something awesome. And it's like, how the fuck am I supposed to know that? You like, know, <laughs> like collecting random items in a in a 90s point and click game. Yeah, exactly. These work together how? How was I supposed to know that? You use the banana to grease the chain? What? Yeah. It's yeah, it's very weird. So it's definitely one of those things where like they have stepped so far forward in perfecting the basic Soulsborne formula, but now opening it up to an open world to to not make the game less difficult but more accessible, which is kind of what people have been asking for. Mm. But there are still like key design decisions in this series that are just so stupid and it's not like i need a quest journal but it's small things you know like if i talk to somebody give me all their dialogue at once don't make me talk to them three or four times immediately one after the other um but that being said i'm still i'm still enjoying it i mean it's it's really fun i think the the other thing that really pushed me away besides the difficulty on the other games was that there's two things that's really been helping me I wasn't a big fan of this game until maybe three or four hours in when the combat kind of clicked with me and I felt like I had more options. And there's kind of two reasons why. Number one is um, a lot of people were saying this on Twitter. This is not really a combat game. It's a rhythm game. And it really is about that. It's not about I heard like oh, saying that about Sekiro. And that's a very interesting idea to me. Yeah, because basically it's like you think, oh, I just need to get in there and kill him. I need to land more hits than he lands on me or I need to get stronger. So my hits do more damage. I need to get the right weapon. And it's like, no, it's all about patience. It's like, hey, sit there, learn the enemy, let him do their strike, wait for the moment, then hit him. OK, wait. OK, wait, then hit him. Wait, you know, it's it's all about that rhythm that you start to get into, because if you go in there and you just start swinging at people, unless you're soup, unless you're like very over leveled compared to them you're gonna die even if you have like three scrub mobs around you they can take you down very quickly because they're just gonna start swinging at you and you're surrounded um and that's not a thing about difficulty that's the thing about like you got to pay attention you got to take the combat seriously it's about rhythm it's not just mashing buttons um and once i figured that out and really took that to heart it became easier to handle the combat and i think the second part is um 
it really reminded me of the saying in Dungeons and Dragons, which is that the first like four or five levels of Dungeons and Dragons, when your character is low leveled, is both the most difficult. It's basically the most difficult part of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Because you have such low health and you have like no abilities. You have like no abilities, no spells. Your weapons don't do a lot of damage. So when your health is like nine and you're fighting rats that are doing four pit points of damage, which means every time you get hit, it's like half your health gone and you don't really have anything to do. <laughs> you can't pop abilities or spells or anything because you haven't learned them yet. It sucks. And that that's kind of like what it is with these souls porn games. Those first couple hours, especially if you're not used to that combat, it sucks. <laughs> you're dying a lot. And the only way to level up is to not die and collect enough runes. But once you kind of get over that hump and you get into the game and you've got at least enough starting gear, then you can start to wipe the floor and grind some mobs. That's that's when it feels a lot better. Yeah, I, um, so the yeah, combat. The, the combat to me is like you mentioned has been great because, like, they've added um, they've added guard, so you don't necessarily have to be really good at parrying to do some sort of counter attack. You can take some more of a stamina hit and be able to stagger the enemy and break their guard and stab them. Um, uh, and then uh, they also added a system that the f- the faster the more you are you're keeping on a person attacking them rhythmically uh you are building up an invisible guard meter or like break meter that isn't shown so you mm-hmm. so if i hit an enemy once every 10 seconds he won't break but if i hit him 3 times within 10 seconds he will break and you'll hear that guard break sound, and then you'll be able to do the move on him. So it's yeah, like, like like he basically goes open for a heavy attack on. Him. Yeah, yeah, so it's like all about timing that. And I've been trying to like jump attacks can really boost that. So like doing a jump attack and like doing, it's like it's so varied now the combat. Uh, not that it wasn't before, but there's just so many more options now. And you can like like a lot of the times I'll quickly go to a two handed because it doubles your strength and smash mm-hmm. a guy and then switch back to a shield block like all that stuff is there for you to do and you're just doing it like it, it's it's like you said it's so rhythmical rhythmical rhythmic and rhythmic. like uh it, it, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah there's like a cadence Eurythmics. and pattern to it and I, I think i've always enjoyed that about souls games but it like really shines here uh um, yeah and like you said even at the weakest enemies because your character gets staggered like they can just take you down an instant uh and you weren't like even though there's no one like who is t- who is too good to not ever be taken down because anyone could be taken down by anything at any time uh yeah i want to say I, sorry go ahead. no I, I you go My yeah i was gonna say it, related. it is still difficult but it's less punishing it's kind of totally. like like we talked about celeste where like celeste is screen based you still have to get across that screen but when you don't there's not a super punishment. You just kind of respawn on that screen. Um, and it feels like with Elden Ring, there's a lot of that because you can choose when you want to avoid. You can choose to get, to kind of cheese enemies and run past them on your horse, etc. But there's still certain things you're going to have to do, you know, like there's a boss guarding that chest. So you're still going to have to beat that boss, etc. Um, and with the Sights of Grace and everything, it means that if you do die, it's not that far for you to respawn and come back to it. So it, there's still difficulty. It's still difficult to beat these bosses and many bosses around the world, etc. But it's not as punishing to get up to them or to lose to them. Yeah, and 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 I I know that the thing you shared was a joke, but like on like truly anything you can do in the game is a method for beating anything in the game. Like there's no yeah. like people use the word cheesing. There's no cheesing. There is just playing Dark Souls. Like I had a really tough enemy get stuck between a door and a wall, and I slashed him through that door. And I never had to find him again. Like all I, there's another guy who was really difficult that I led and got, had him get crushed by a boulder. Like there, there are times when you're going to have to buck up and like be good and, and take a couple tries with it. And then there's other times where it's just like, I, I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to, I'm going to be a little cheese monster and that's perfectly fine. Everything's viable in souls. Yeah. And the people who say it's not viable are not, are never people who are into souls games. It's people who are like, Oh, you have to be really good. Like, it's just tryhards. Yeah, yeah. I hate that stuff. Um, Jake, what were you gonna say? Tangentially related? No, yeah. I just I really like the idea of like, um, 
I like that idea of a of 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 a rhythmically based combat game, but not like not like a quote unquote rhythm game. And I want to say that when Sekiro, like a couple weeks after Sekiro came out, I could be just totally making this up in my head and misremembering it. But I want to say I saw a video of a guy who looked through the Sekiro bosses and set them to a metronome and like figured out what their actual mm-hmm. rhythm was. Um, where and then like you could you know that kind of that ballet of fighting with that specific boss. Um, I might go yeah. try to track that down and see if it was a real video or if I'm totally imagining that. Yeah, I can, I can make see it that now. being a thing. And also, yeah. like hitbox stuff is crazy in in Dark Souls. Like you can you can sit down in front of enemies and they'll just slash their sword above you because they can't hit you. There's like that stuff has always been around, but when I see videos of that, like I, I think I watched a no hit of uh it might have been margie marguerite or uh godric and i was like i could never in a million years will i ever be able to do that <laughs> there uh, is yeah. a, a triumph sorry i'm gonna take this back to a very jake thing there's a there's a t- achievement in hyperlight drifter to complete the game without either without dying or without taking any damage i think it's without taking any damage and wow. I, I love that cannot fathom that I love that because it's like, oh, you're a platinum hunter. You want your platinum trophy? Well, screw you. <laughs> you know, you're gonna die. Uh, that's that's wild. Um, yeah. So that's Elden Ring. I've been super enjoying it. Uh, Ian, we have to do a stream where we at least probably start off dueling and oh, then I clear forgot. some areas. Yes, they need to fix their freaking multiplayer because I tried to look up a multiplayer guide and it's it's just still horribly convoluted. Like, I think it should be kind of convoluted if you're just summoning help or invading somebody. But if we want to go around this open world together, just let us do that. Don't make it like use this item on summons on the ground like, and this whole complicated system. It sucks. Well, it's multiplayer not as... in Monster Hunter was kind of bogus. Yes, that is similar to that. This worse. is worse. Oh, no, this, oh, oh, Monster Hunter is way worse. worse. No, in this game, you have to find specific items and then you have to do like signals on the ground. Then you have to set a password so that they summon to you and all that. That's much worse. Much worse than having to do like menu stuff. Mm. No, I mean, but those items are at the beginning of the game. You already have them all. No, you still have to purchase them. What? No. You can earn them. They're not just given to you. No, you still have to do certain things in the game to get them. Not that it's difficult, but it's not like, hey, here's the multiplayer menu. You know? Yeah, I get it. Maybe I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, Okay. Uh, Yeah, so I've been enjoying Elden Ring. We should do a stream. Um, God, I just want to play it now. Uh, It's so good. It's so much fun. Uh, Ian, do you want to talk about the other game you've been playing? Yeah, let's talk about it. Mine as well. Uh, I, I, I feel like this is a good sequel story to last summer, last July, when... Maggie and I went down to Florida to buy a house and we had to do with we had to deal with literally the worst housing market for buyers in U.S. history. Everything was crazy uh, overpriced. Well, I don't want to say overpriced. Everything had a crazy markup price, which is basically the standard now. Uh, You had pretty much like 24 hours to see a home after it came on the market and put an offer in. Uh, Most houses were averaging like 20 plus offers. And uh, look, I'm just going to say it. We 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 one shot it. We did a speed run of, of the U.S. housing market. <laughs> we showed up. We yeah, said, show did. us some houses. And the third house we saw, we put an offer in and we, we had that house the next morning, basically. Um, and I, I didn't talk about it. OK, I'll tell about it real quick. The U.S. It's, housing market, any percent. I'm not going to go into the complications <laughs> of it, but basically we agreed with the seller on a price. And before we got to closing, for a mysterious reason, which we think is they got confused, they took $20,000 off the price of the house. Perfect. After after we had already agreed to the price of the house. And we were like, like we had to call our parents and be like, do you you understand what's happening? And they didn't really understand it. We talked to our realtor and they were like, I kind of understand what's happening, but I think they're just making a mistake, basically. (laughs) That's and they think they think we're gonna walk and so they're trying to lower the price and i'm like but we're not walking they're like yeah but they don't know that and so, <laughs> so long story short we like we beat the shit out of the u.s housing market last year um so then uh god in heaven hallowed be thy name 
uh, <laughs> basically decided to punish me by forcing me into the U.S. car market over the mm. last month. Um, because uh, uh, long story short, basically Maggie was driving down the highway one day and her front right tire exploded <laughs> and she had to pull over to the side of the road and um, she doesn't have a spare tire. She has a fix a flat kit, which uh, doesn't work if literally the tire has separated off the mm -hmm. rim and is on the side of 95 in Jacksonville, Florida, which I drove past it the other day a month later and her tire is still on the side of the yeah, highway. I have never seen more exploded tires on the side of the road than when I lived in Florida. Yeah, it's I, but it's weird because her tires only had 3000 miles on them. Granted, they were kind of budget tires and she didn't run over anything. And that stretch of road's not bad. But anyways, so her car was in the shop for a couple of days. So she had to drive my car because she does uh, like home visits for work and I work from home. So she was driving my car and uh, four or five days after she blew her tire out, somebody rear ended her going like 30 miles per hour. Uh, they didn't get damaged. I mean, they didn't get hurt. Maggie didn't get hurt. But my car, long story short, got totaled. Um, oh, no. Yeah, it was straight totaled. It was straight. I didn't know that. It's it's weird because the damage doesn't look that bad, but then you the rear trunk door didn't close and like the bottom floor of the trunk was pushed in like 10 wow. inches. <laughs> so it was actually a lot of like structural damage and uh parts are car parts are really expensive right now. And so I had to deal with their insurance who I called their insurance that night and I was like, "Hey, I need to file a claim. You know, your driver hit me." And they're like, "Okay, we'll get back to you." They didn't call me. And I kept calling them. I'm like, you need to like do an adjuster. You need to get in a statement. I need, I need, what am I going to do with this car? There's a tarp on it in my driveway, you know? <laughs> and they're like, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. I waited a week and then I went and filed with my car insurance. I, I ended up not hearing from their insurance for three weeks. Wow. And by that point I was like, I was like, I'm so happy. I ended up going with my insurance. So my insurance took a look at my car and, um, they said it was totaled. I'm skipping a lot of time here, but basically like, like by the time I got to three weeks after the accident, I had a check in my hand to go buy a new car. And okay, this, this worked in my favor. When I bought the car three years ago, it was an old car. It was a 2008, had 110,000 miles on it. I paid $8,500 for it. It was a great car though. Great deal. When the car got totaled, it had 145,000 miles on it, and Geico paid me $10,000 for it. Ooh. So I Ooh. made money owning yeah. that car. That's I, crazy. My first car yeah. I bought for $2,500. It, I got an accident. It cracked the frame, so they totaled it. They paid me $3,500 for it. Nice. That's good. But so, so the problem is the reason why I got paid that much is because the car market is bonkers right now. Like, like... I, normally I buy used cars. I've never bought myself a new car and normally I buy used cars. But the problem is used cars right now are insanely expensive because the new mark, the new car stock is so low that like if you're a one car owner and your car gets totaled or your car breaks down, you need a new car. You're not gonna be able to find a new car. So you have to buy a used car at a marked up price because because everybody's trying to buy these used cars. So I was like looking at it and I'm going I prefer not to buy new cars. It's kind of a waste of money. But in this instance, it is literally cheaper to buy a new car than it is to buy a used car because you're either going to buy a used car not in great shape for a lot of money or you're going to buy a new car for basically, you know, if you do it right, you get it around MSRP. You just have to wait a couple weeks for it. Yeah. Um, and even even like the old adage of like, don't buy a new car, buy last year's model with 5000 miles on it. Those cars used were more expensive than the than the new car <laughs> because people need a car now and thankfully i didn't i had i work from home and i have my miata that i was driving around and i had my rental from geico and so long story short i was like it's so crazy i went to like six dealers that first day and i was like show me a car and i got one test drive because all the others they didn't have any cars on the lot like I went to Honda and they were like, well, we have the one that's parked inside in its last year's model. So I like sat in it and I'm like, OK, I went to Toyota. They barely even let me in the dealership. The guy was an asshole. He's just like, what do you want? I'm like, I want a new car. And he goes, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know, like an SUV. He goes, what do you what do you want? And I'm like, a RAV4. Do you have any RAV4s? And he goes, no. And I was like, 
do you have one that I could look at? And he goes, no. And I'm like, when are you going to get somebody? He goes, several months and they've all been sold. And I was like, okay, well, fuck off then. <laughs> I left. Do you want my money or not? <laughs> yeah. So it was impossible. So like, it was this weird situation where I'm trying to buy a car and I'm basically just having to go off of online reviews. And then at the same time, trying to visit all these dealers around the Jacksonville area, literally just popping in and being like, do you have this car? And they're like, no. And you're just like, OK, let me know when you get it. And then they never call you back because they don't need to. They're getting like three cars a week, you know, and there's 40 people to buy. So they don't have to chase you down. So long you story go short, to that I, with all the Volkswagens that got lit on fire. Yeah, that's what oh, I got to do. One. So anyways, to wrap the story to some sort of close, I was finally able to get a test drive in a Hyundai Tucson, which is Hyundai's are normally like budget cars, but they've really come around lately. And the 20, the 2022 Tucson is a new model. And it, reading all these reviews, people were literally just like, this is way too good for a Hyundai. They're like, oh, yeah, no, I got a <laughs> Tucson as a rental once and I loved it. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, this is, this is like a Lexus. It is nicer and quieter and smoother than all the other cars until you get to like luxury car level. And I was like, okay. So I did a test drive in a gas one, just a normal gas engine. And it was really nice, but I wanted the hybrid. So I ended up like playing around with some dealers and I basically went to one dealer and I was like, look, can you get me the car? And they're like, yes. And they showed me the ship list, but they're like, it's literally not coming for a month though. We have one coming in a month. And normally I'd wait, but I actually have to drive down to Miami in like a week or two, which is like a five hour drive. And so I was like, no, I really need it sooner than that. And they're like, okay, well, here's the price. You know, you can come back and you can put down a reserve on this if you want. I'm like, okay. So I go to another dealer and they're like, they're like, we can get you a car in a week. And I was like, look, Damn. you give me a car in a week and I'll pay you $2,000 more than that other place was paying me. I And they originally wanted me to pay more than that, but I brought them down to that. And they're like... Okay. And within 72 hours, they had a car for wow. me, which in this market, I basically paid like a finder's fee, which I am totally fine with. Because again, I never found that car to test drive in hybrid, but they got me the exact car in like the rare white color exactly as I wanted. Um, so it's fun. It's, it's a hybrid. I'm hearing this happening in like a, like a shady alley and they're like, we can get you a car in a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it was, it was like a big fancy dealership. And I think the reason they could get it to me is because they're one of the few network dealerships. So they literally oh, yeah. had one of their sister dealers from 100 miles away bring the car to them for me. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, it's a hybrid, which is it's like crazy future tech. Um, because when I'm going around parking lots and stuff, it's in EV mode. It's mm -hmm. like completely silent. Um, and then it has wireless Android Auto. And I love Android Auto, but literally I just get in the car and it automatically connects. So I have Google Maps and all my podcasts and all that stuff and the full display, but I don't have to plug it in. It has the full cruise control features, which is like, you know, future tech, but it's great for like, like if I'm driving down the road, the highway, I, I put it on and it steers for you, keeps you in the lane and it detects the car in front of you. So it'll slow all the way down to a stop and then keep going in like stop and go traffic, which is crazy. All that's kind of standard. There's one feature, though, that I read in the manual and I had to test it and I tested it the other day with my nephew and we confirmed it's real. This is bonkers. Car's great. This is the craziest thing. When you are driving down the road, it will read the speed limit sign and then display that as a little reminder for like 10 seconds on the dash. It's, it's not using map data. Ooh. It's literally reading the speed limit sign. And then it just has a little icon that says like speed limit 45. And it just displays that for like 15 seconds after you pass the sign. It's cr that's craziest thing, right? That's I want to know, does it get confused by like root numbers? I don't think so. It's been really good so far. Like I, it will I, even do like like if like if I'm gonna stop if I'm gonna stoplight and I take a left turn and there's immediately a speed limit sign it'll pick that up. Wow, I yeah. do I do remember around the early days when Tesla was like, "Hey, smart driving, it's smart, it's gonna drive for you." I remember that people were able to trick it by yes. painting the wrong number yeah. on the, or like altering the sign, and then it would yeah. go the wrong speed. Yeah. But yours is just indicating to you what the speed is. 
Exactly. It's yeah. And like it doesn't read the cruise it, control or anything. No. And it doesn't read any other signs. And it's, it's really, it's really nice that it does that though. That's like, like the rest of the tech is awesome, but it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's standard. Well, actually it is standard on Hun all Hyundai models, but that's the one thing that kind of blew my mind was like, it's reading the speed limit sign, <laughs> which is crazy. That's but anyways, wild. yeah. So that's just that, you know, we did so good on the housing market that uh, God has forced me into buying a very expensive brand new car because that was basically the only way for me to get a car that, <laughs> that is functioning at a decent price right now. Maybe if the market's so good, I've been working from home, maybe I'll sell my car. I was literally it's really, just thinking it's the really same good. thing. It's got like 64,000 miles on it. I think the problem, though, the problem, though, honestly, is I looked it up because my concern was that they were going to repair it and give it back to me. And I didn't want to drive it around repaired with the amount of damage it had on it. So I was looking at like trading it in and trade in value was like six thousand dollars. So you should probably just total your car if you really want to get rid of it, <laughs> because then the insurance agency has to pay like the fair market price, I'll not the trade in price. Yeah, I got a bat somewhere. Yeah. Anyways, I, it's good to get that off my chest because I've been like holding that in because it was like I didn't want to talk about it until it was done. But I've had the car for a week now. It's all done. And somehow I got out of that alive. So don't let my, Maggie my karma it? is paid. Oh, I uh, don't. I don't want to. She's not because she's a bad driver. driver. Clearly she isn't. She is a bad driver. Other, pe well, <laughs> other people are bad drivers around her as well. <laughs> yeah. Bad luck. Yeah, that would suck if they totaled it and then I had to go out and buy it again. <laughs> um, that's that's wild. Um, wow, I uh, that's crazy. Uh, moving on, it's time for the news, which means we got to play the news theme, which means I'm gonna hit this button on my Steam Deck and hopefully it plays it. Here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. There she is, boys. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? I think no, I Will and I just realized I can. I'm running. I can run my guitar into this board that's also running no, my God, mic into no. it. I can play it live. Oh next man! Time. Well, that was live. He's 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 on the in other the side. other room. <laughs> um. Okay, so that's a. I, I think I set up that switch wrong. Anyways, it's time for the news, folks. Uh, there's not too too much news this week. Uh, only a couple little stories here. Uh, anyone want to dive into something first? I don't want this new Pokemon game. Why not? It, it look. I just want to say two things here. Number one, this was literally like a Sunday morning Eastern time announcement, which is insane. Like I knew there was a Pokemon presents coming, but I mm -hmm. didn't realize it was on a Sunday. It's a really weird two, time. Yeah. And number two, they did uh Pokemon Arceus like dirty. Cause this feels like looking at this game. It feels like Arceus was just a tech demo, like a mm -hmm. proof of concept. And then they were just like, okay, it works. Let's make a full Pokemon game around it. Mm -hmm. And, Arceus is still worth the money. I enjoyed my time with it, but I did man, they did it dirty so quick. This this basically looks like a mainstream Pokemon game, but with Arceus mechanics. You know, Spain. Yeah, Supposedly. I think I, I think I had I had posted in uh, the Subpixel Discord that I I don't really want another open world Pokemon game unless it's a snap like, because um, mm -hmm. I just. I I I enjoyed the the linear progression of the top-down Pokemon games. And I feel like for the ones where you're going to be focusing on the turn-based combat, um I don't know. I mean, I'll give it the benefit of a doubt. See how the gameplay works. But. Yeah. Cuz this could be still linear like the old Pokemon games, but just the the it's more of like open world on the routes, you know. Mhm. Mm yeah, that would be nice. That Open I, world I, sections between towns. Yeah, I think I would prefer that the most, to be honest. But I because I feel like an, it was open world snap like. I mean, why not just give our character a camera in this game? Let me click it. Yeah, why not just photo mode? Photo mode. I baby. would love it. Let me do that. <laughs> click. <laughs> I this okay. Character. Look, I want photo mode to only. <laughs> I want it to. I want it to be gyro controlled, and here's why. Because I want you to literally have to go like this, either with the switch or the controller. That then, was in like... new Pokemon Snap. You could. Oh, that's a great idea, yeah. man. That's so good. And then the trigger. Ka -ching! Ka 
Archie. That's cool. uh, I think it was. I wish it was the bumper, but I think it was A. But I could oh, be wrong. That's bad. They messed up. Which of these starters are you guys picking? Fire always. Yeah, Apple He's Boy. He's a little chili pepper. Oh, I'm taking oh, my the Apple Bottom duck. Boy. Duck with the hat. No. Donald. Oh, he's awesome. Quack, Quaxel, I think he's called. Oh, you guys suck. I always choose the fire starter. Yes. See, I always I choose just... the water starter and then name him after the fire starter. God, <laughs> that way everyone's garbage. confused. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 like, it feels so soon to me for RCS. And yeah, I, I, like, I agree with both of you. Like, it seems like they did Arceus dirty. And also, I don't want a Pokemon open world exactly like that. I want I want something that will be more linear. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully they deliver on that. That'd be. And I do nice. still wish the art direction were just a little more anything else. It it does look like it. It it like there's a really good uh, image of like a castle town in the distance and the open world in front of it. And they did what I said they should have done with Arceus, which is. There's freaking trees everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just like bland terrain texture. They added yeah. stuff to break it up. And I, I, it really does feel like with Arceus, it was a proof of concept. And this is them getting back to actually putting the effort into it and adding all the nice stuff on the side, the towns and all that stuff and, and really, really making it shine. So I I wasn't a big fan of Arceus. I appreciated some of the stuff they were doing and how creative they were. It didn't quite work for me. So to see them bring a lot of that stuff back into the main line, I'm on board, baby. Totally. Yeah. I'll Plus, play it. I, yeah. I'll play it eventually. I, it just depends if breath of the wild two is coming out this year. Uh, am I going to be playing this at the same time? Who knows? Hey, real quick. I forgot to mention it. I'm putting Elden ring on the 2022 game of the year short list. It's going yeah. on the list. I think I put it there already. Yeah, I'm just saying it. I feel like we've got to mention it on a local chat. It's it's a contender, folks. So Jake, Kyle, y'all I gotta better be it. prepared. Yeah, and it's I think selling like gangbusters. It is. I think I'm gonna put. I think minimum ten hours. I think once you play ten hours of Elden Ring, you've basically got it, and you're gonna understand if you love it or not. In my first Souls game, I forget. I I think it's I funny. wrote something in there. Forget what I wrote. Uh, but anyways, I, I forgot to mention that. But in the meantime, I'll transition. The one thing I don't like about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is graphics look bad, y'all. And we really desperately need a Nintendo Switch Pro Switch 2, um, which coincidentally... Is that the some, fault of the Switch's hardware? Yes, 100%. It's running at like 720p, no anti aliasing But there are... Nice looking games, 3D. Nice looking 3D games on yeah, the but, Switch. Yes, but even something like Breath of the Wild, which looks good, still st- still has some problems on that hardware, where they can't really put the polish on it. Mm. Um, so there uh, were some leaks out of some NVIDIA code that reference NVN2. Here's the thing, folks. NVN is the internal NVIDIA code name for the Switch Graphics API. So NVN2, which supports ray tracing and DLSS 2.2, which is all that future tech that allows the game to look better with higher frame rates. This is a pretty good rumor of Switch 2 tech being out there. What do you guys think? I would like to play... Uh, better looking Nintendo game. Me too. I was just yeah. thinking to myself, I'm like, this seems soon after the launch of the Switch, but that was six five or seven years, years ago. Twenty seventeen? Yeah. Oh that yeah, you're right, because five years ago is when Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. It, it today is the fifth anniversary of Breath huh. of the Wild. Wow. Yeah. I because I like I, I enjoy Switch games. It's just that hardware is definitely lagging behind. You know, when I when I blow those games up on a 4K 65 inch TV, they don't look good. You know, <laughs> they don't look good. I, I will say even, Karen, even handheld some games don't look good. Karen's playing through Breath of the Wild right now for her first time. And I, I like that game still has an anti-aliasing problem like most Nintendo games do. But it is not that noticeable because you're distracted by everything else. Unlike Arceus. 
Um, but I st- that game still look has its moments where it's just like, man, the art does, design yeah. and, and art direction. I think it's a testament to the art direction as well that they totally. uh, they understood the limitations of the Switch, and so they yeah. kind of made sure that everything looked good holistically. Yeah, that, that game still runs at thirty though. Thirty. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. So... I've thought about throwing it on a on a PC and trying that 4K stuff, uh, just to see what that's kind of like. But who knows? Um, yeah. So it, I I'm it's it's beyond time. We need either a Switch Pro or a Switch Two with full backwards compatibility. You bring that out. As long as that comes out before Breath of the Wild Two comes out, I'm buying it day one because I want to be prepared for Breath of the Wild Two. Yeah, and I think also um, you can see this in a lot of uh, news coverage and everything, but if you if you pay attention, a lot of Nintendo releases now are only shown on OLED models or yep. the second generation battery models. So like clearly there's some phasing out that's starting and they want that best picture, and I think that's leading towards a... I- I'm not saying they're going to change out of the Switch brand. I don't think any of us are saying that. But uh, definitely a refresh of like a pro or something. The um, Wii U two, yes. The, the Wii Switch two. U. Switch U right now. Uh, speaking of switching, we're gonna switch to the next topic. Um, Peacock. This was news back in September. Uh, there was a Twisted Metal uh, uh, TV show series coming, uh, and then with Anthony Mackie. And recently, this past week, they announced that Peacock has ordered. The Twisted Metal comedy series. I didn't. I, that comedy. It's a comedy series. It makes it seem think, like in the I mean, in the same vein that RoboCop is a comedy or Starship Troopers were a comedy. Uh, it, no, because God. those are those are intelligent. <laughs> well, no, yeah. I'm not saying in terms of the intelligence of it, but I feel like they're like, probably like going to try to race. lean into that kind of yeah, the, like that like dark satire kind of. Yeah, but who's Anthony Mackie going to be? Is he going to be the guy with the big wheels, like stuck in between the two? I wheels? want him to be sweet. I thought tooth. they said he was playing. Uh, yeah, I thought they said he was playing. Su- I can't remember. But anyway, they're going to put I, Anthony Mackie in a mask for the whole. I don't show. know how I feel about this. Anthony Mackie is one of those actors that I don't think is that good, but I like him. There's something about him that I really like. I've seen but him in, in serious roles where he's he, he is in serious roles. I think he's okay, but like trying to build a whole twisted metal series around him. This is this is Walt, Walton Goggins should be mm, should be in this. Mm-hmm. You need somebody bonkers off the wall crazy. Danny McBride, you know, you Nicholas need some Cage. crazy people. Yeah, you, Ghost Rider, Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie's trying to be too serious for this, you know, and I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, but I'm I've glad it's on played, Peacock. Yeah, I've never played Twisted Metal, um, but I feel like it, this is a as a television show premise it should be an ensemble show rather than someone where you're like oh that guy's the lead yeah that's a good point yeah like the dead or alive movie where it's just a bunch of like b-list celebrities playing the characters that's what it should be yeah dead or alive um yeah i i i i just feels weird ping and why is it and peacock series, seems like such a weird streaming that too platform for it it's a big platform it, it could be ready for peak october so when that comes back up <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna be ready um be peacocking for it two more bits of news here Bandcamp uh is joining epic games it's like a weird uh, acquisition epic for epic. announced they're acquiring yeah. acquisitioning Bandcamp. um what do you i, I don't know is, I I honestly was not that surprised by this because, you know, Epic has always been a bit, they've always been a bit two faced. You know, on the one hand they're making games, but on the other hand they're making the game engine. They're they're controlling mm-hmm. the asset store, etc. Um, and I think this is them heading down towards that multimedia path. You know, they've really taken off with their Fortnite concert series, which makes a huge amount of money every time mm-hmm. you have a celebrity come on to Fortnite for that. Um, and they, they picked up harmonics because they want to go more into that music video game presentation style. And I, I see this as, uh, every video game needs music. Every video game needs sound assets. That's so why true. not buy an existing marketplace community driven library in a way mm-hmm. to provide along with your other assets in your engine? 
Yeah, I do know. I mean, most of the video game soundtracks I own are were purchased on Bandcamp because that's where the composers have them hosted. And I know mm-hmm. tons of any any indie band I know where I like act personally know the people in the band. Um, they like to sell their stuff on Bandcamp because that's what gives them a biggest cut of the profit. Yeah. Yep. Which I also know we we talked on on the Discord that that's kind of Epic's that they're leaning into that whole thing of being like we'll give you more money if you sell yeah. your whatever with us. That's yeah. a good point. I didn't I didn't even think about that that side of uh of like game development and also like giving people their fair share. That makes sense. Uh, final bit of news here. Stalker two development is paused due to the war in Ukraine. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, unsurprising. Unsurprising. Uh, I know there's a couple other studios that are Ukraine based that are also doing this, or at least put out messages like, Hey, um, we're please don't bother us. If yeah, we don't we're... give you updates right now. Exactly. Um, I mean, all safety and, uh, good thoughts to all those people who are developing games in Ukraine. Uh, it's a crappy situation that's really stupid, and you shouldn't have to deal with it. But you are, and I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize GSC Game World was out of uh, the Ukraine, but it almost kind of makes sense because Chernobyl is in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Um, also, yeah. there's a lot of freelancers at other European studios also in Ukraine. Yeah, U- Ukraine is a uh, one of their one of their big industries is basically uh tech workers, engineers, testers, etc. I I have 5 team members out of the Ukraine um that I work pretty closely with that have been going through tough situation. Totally. Uh and like I said last week, there's plenty of links around uh I know there's I've retweeted some stuff uh for if you feel inclined to donate, anything like that. Um, I mean, the game industry, I feel like, has really stepped up. There was that um, CD Projekt Red stuff uh, with some profits. Yeah. And even games banning a uh, uh, Russian sale of things. Uh, it feels like everyone's coming together and being like, hey, this is a stupid thing for you to do. Um, uh, yeah. oh, it's just I know the, uh, the This War of Mine studio, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but I know they were doing like 100% of proceeds of This War of Mine to... Oh um, yes, I did see that. That's awesome. Also, a pretty good game. Uh, I played it years ago. Uh, I think that's all the news. Uh, which means uh, we're done. That's it. Wow, we're not wow. gonna do emails this week. Did I was we gonna do emails, emails, but you did your little secret email, email link. Don't look. I didn't. Do look. you want some emails? Yeah, if people are emailing us, we should. That's we should true. read. I mean, but yeah. Emails. People, people are emailing us, Ian. Um, I know. Sorry, uh, I'm I, sorry. I got this one in from. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I have some late breaking news. Oh, no. uh oh. <laughs> Confirmed by Jeff Grubb, or at least corroborated by Jeff Grubb. Star Wars Eclipse is reportedly now expected to release in 2027 oh, or 2028. That is. That's yeah. five or six years away. That's why would you even announce it this early? They were having they were having hiring issues because nobody yeah, wants to work that. for Quantic Dream because <laughs> yeah, crazy. It's just been like PR nightmare after PR nightmare for them. That's cr- I just uh, anyways. Sorry, that's just su- such crazy dates. <laughs> I had to call it out. Uh, sorry. This um email. Sorry, that's where we're at. This one's in from Chris Fergal. Uh, sorry, I was having trouble reading, reading the name. Uh, anyways, he writes in from Sunday. Uh, Sunday, New Jersey. Uh, my eight-year-old son is crying after I deleted his Minecraft world. <laughs> sorry. Oh, my God. I should, pre- I should pre-read these. <laughs> <laughs> should I permanently take away his video games? My 17-year-old says that it's digital Lego, but I think these games are bad for him, and he needs good old-fashioned outside time. Wait, um, they, you deliberately deleted his Minecraft wait, world? Wait, 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 wait. This is a person, this is a real person who has emailed us specifically yes. to ask this question. Yes. Wait, yeah. wait, how How did you solicit these emails? Uh, it's will at subpixelfilms.com. Yes, so yeah. how did, who, is this a viewer? Is this a regular viewer? Yeah, yes, yeah. they're coming in. They, they're just coming in. We just, gotta, we just gotta focus on this question here, which is that, like, <laughs> You're a terrible parent. 
man. Like when you were a kid building models or making paper airplanes, did your parents come over and crush those because they didn't love you either the same way you don't love your kid? Because that's what you just did, man. Just make sure it's not taking over their life. But for d dear Lord, oh, I hate this man. The next question. <laughs> um, Let's see what hi, emails we get uh, next This week. is from, uh, what was that, Jake? See what emails we get next week. After I know, right? Uh, this spicy is spicy response. <laughs> I know. Uh, this is in from it. Philip uh, James in uh, Cooperstown, New York. Uh, I am 13 years old. Are there any tips to saving up for a gaming PC? Ooh, how did you guys do it when you when you grow up? Well, um, my parents got me a Dell Inspiron 1600. Those are good. Those are good. It weighs about 15 pounds. <laughs> what about you, Will? I, I feel like when I when I bought a gaming P I, I bought a pre-built Alienware at one point, and I think I just saved up like birthday and Christmas money. Uh, this was also back uh -huh. when Alienware was like first around, and it, they were actually pretty good and not crappy. Um, I still have that case somewhere at my parents' house. But like once I was like building computers, I was already like working and stuff, so I was just like saving up the gotcha. old fashioned way. Yeah, I think for me, my 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 dad is really into computers too, so it was always like we would do projects together, like when he was upgrading his computer, or like he would give me an old computer and I would mess around with it. But I think when I started building my own computers like fresh, like buying parts, I always had like some sort of deal with my parents where it was like, hey, if I do like these specific chores and I pay for half of it, will you guys pay for the other half? And I'm talking about like like four hundred dollar PCs where like I would pay two hundred. That may have actually been how I got my first computer. Yeah. And I always felt like that was a good way because it's not an impossible price, but you still learning to save up. And and I would do things like I would, uh, you know, like do chores. I would like sell stuff I had around the house. Um I, I I don't have pretty much any video game I had as a youth because I was always just selling them and trading them up. So it was always like, I've got something, let me sell it, get to the next one, let me sell it, get to the next one. You know, like I think I sold, like I, I sold like an SNES to get a PSP and then I sold my PSP to get an iPod and then I think I sold an iPod to get to an Xbox 360. You know, it was just kind of this weird trade in over the years. So I think a lot of it is. Um, you got to compound that wealth like that. And I think the other thing is, honestly, I don't want to be like a geezer, but I think you've got it easier now because you don't have to buy for games. You don't have to pay for games anymore. There's so many good free to play games. Final Fantasy 14, Lost Ark, even Game Pass, 15 bucks a month. And you've got like 200 games to play. Like we just weren't that lucky. We still had to like wait for a Steam sale to buy a bunch of $5 games yeah. to play. Otherwise, you didn't have anything to play. But you just have to basically buy the hardware now and maybe 15 bucks a month for a subscription. And you've got games out the ass. It was also a lot of coordinating like hey, this game's multiplayer, it's on Steam, let's all buy it, it's on sale so we can play it together. Um, yeah. There's a lot of that. Um, next up, we've got Andy from Texas. I caught my son peeing out the window while he was playing Fortnite <laughs> to avoid leaving the game. I'm absolutely at a loss. What should I do? Jesus, take away Fortnite, first of all. It's a bad game. You gotta instill some quality values in that kid. Uh... <laughs> Just, I don't know, man. Jake, what do you do when you get your kid peeing out the window because he don't want to lose the Fortnite Royale? <laughs> get him a bottle. Get him a bottle. Get him a catheter. Well, get a depends. stadium pal. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I would just be like, look, you can't let the games take over your life. Also, this is a bad game. Ian. Ian, Ian, we just, uh, it, bling, email just came in, just oh. came in what does it from say? Gray Watson in the UK. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My 14 year old son wants to play video games. Are there any Christian video games which talk about <gasps> Jesus and can help him grow closer to God? Gray Watson, listen up, you British bastard. We are planning a Christian game 
stream series. And you'll be able to learn from us the glory of God through games. That's right. Will and I. Bible Man video game. <laughs> Captain Bible <laughs> that we've played. Captain Bible. Will and, I, will and I will be donning the cloth and becoming priests <laughs> of our Lord and Savior as we take you through the holy land of Christian video games. Um, I, I will say honestly, Elden Ring, uh, Elden Ring's got kind of a it's Christian true. Christian tinge to it. So Do you maybe think just throw throw that at him. We can get our priesthood certified through some sort of internet means. My, you can I get officiate. You could become ordained. Uh, ordained, but that it takes. It's a different it, kind of ordination. It takes like five minutes, and I know that because my Maggie made a joke to my dad about, "Hey, what if you did our?" What if you were you? What if you uh, ordained our wedding? And then my dad just like pulled his phone out and signed up in five minutes, and then was just like, "Well, now I have a yeah. certificate, so we really should do that. We should become ordained priests and ministers." And then you can marry someone on live stream. Oh, <laughs> that's a fantastic idea. That is a fantastic oh, idea. Fantastic idea. Uh, unfortunately, He's that is all the emails uh, from this I week. Probably trick Maggie into it. <laughs> That's that's a good idea. Uh, that's all the emails from this week, folks. Remember, you can email us, will at subpixelfilms.com. I will get those emails, and I will relay them to the guests uh, so we can go through them together. Uh, so don't forget to do that. I'm going to play the end music so we can get the heck out of here. I didn't make an outro button yet on the stream deck, but I will do that now that things are working. Jake, I almost called you Kyle. Ian, thank you so much. Hi. For uh, being on the show today, uh, Ian, you're always here, but Jake, you last minute substitution because Kyle's a jerk. Because um, he's no. going to see a movie about a man who's a and bat. Bats. Ugh. Ugh. Actually, I had a great time yesterday playing Lost Ark with Kyle. Uh, I think yeah. we're gonna play again next Wednesday, so be on the search for that. <laughs> Ian, you have been playing Kingdom Hearts Hi. two. God damn it. I'm so yep. sorry for you. I apparently I'm more than 50% of the way through. We're going to be streaming that again Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. But honestly, follow us at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram because I probably will be doing another stream outside of the normal schedule. I got to I got to knock this game out or at least make more progress before vacay yeah. comes. Uh, I'm actually I'm genuinely surprised the amount of people who now show up to watch yes. you like either facetiously watch you play or actually want to watch you play. Um, I've turned it tuned in out of curiosity mostly i don't want to watch them but it's just like i'm like i want to see what's next because tron was out of left field for me yes um, that surprised me yeah and they like they're pretty this is in the weeds but they're pretty faithful to the like representation yeah. of stuff which is kind of yep. wild to me um but anyways folks that's going to be sunday and then tuesday 8 p.m eastern don't forget to watch that and uh, don't forget about local chat next thursday where you can tune in right here subpixelfilms.com see you next week bye